Good morning. I'm going to do another collage today. And I was thinking about trying to do something really simplified. Just breaking something down to its essence. In um, Creative Authenticity, Ian Roberts talks about how art is fundamentally communication. You know, we feel something and we want to give expression to it. We may be intent on others seeing it, um, or we may not. And we may find someone who responds, like on social media, all those likes that you get that feel so great. Sometimes people share your work, and that's really what you're putting it out there for. But sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's deeper than that. Sometimes it's a feeling that just needs to be expressed. So today I'm trying to pick a minimal of things. Pour out some of my Liquitex matte medium. And I have some old yucky brushes to use with the matte medium. Ian goes on to say in his book, within the initial artistic response to something is a core idea or a feeling. And most of our work comes from stripping away everything that is extraneous to it. Stripping away everything that is extraneous to the core feeling. Translate that vision means to get across the idea or feeling. How cleanly can that idea be isolated and honed? How much can be stripped away? Everything superlifous and tangential needs to be eliminated. Otherwise, the idea might get buried and our intention deflected. And the viewer's attention will too. The problem is seldom that an idea is too simple. Power comes from something deeply felt and simply stated. All great actions have been simple and all great pictures are too. So I thought today I have two more pieces of ripped up paintings and I thought today thinking about um, getting rid of everything superlifous and tangential, eliminating, getting down to the core, honing down, stripping away. Thinking about what the core feeling of the piece that you want to create is. So I just grabbed two pieces of torn up paintings from my um, collage bin. And I'm going to I'm going to create something out of these two pieces today. Something simple, something simply stated, as Ian says in his book. Another thing that Ian talks about is that um, our being conduits of spirit of the divine and how the spiritual flows through us endlessly. He says that Emerson called it gleams of light that flash across the mind. They are seed ideas that need nurturing and developing. They seldom come fully formed. Gleams of light. That makes me think of Maybe adding some gold metallic paint to this very simple collage. I'm just really liking this piece as it stands. 
I'm liking this sort of watery mountain. It's almost a wave. I like how um, the colors sort of symbolize something watery and, and psychic and ethereal against the fire. You know, maybe maybe the ethers of the sky or the sea and the fire of the sun or the shape of a volcano exploding and this fiery red and yellow coming out of being born out of the mountain. And then this purple reminds me, I cut a, a moon out of this scrap the other day for my wolf collage. And I just really am feeling like I need a moon there again. So let's see. I love the patterns that are on this paper. I don't remember what the painting was that I tore up that this paper came from, but it had some beautiful color variations in it. So pretty. Okay, I think I'm going to fasten these down. As they are. Sometimes it seems like when something comes together too easily in art, we, it's so easy to go too far in a painting because we feel like, how could that be done in, in two minutes? Don't I have to put more into that? And so we tend to overwork things so easily. So we have this original feeling and we can get distracted from it and get caught up in the details. And in the end, it's often at the expense of the clarity that we had with that original feeling, that original idea of our image. Simplifying can be so powerful for both the artist and the viewer of the work. our lives too. Don't our lives feel so much better when we, when we simplify? Cut out everything that's not needed to call our attention to. And so much less stress.
Don and I are at that season in life where we're trying to get rid of all the things that are stashed in our house, like things that are up in the attic that we haven't taken out in 12 years since we built this house and things that are stashed in drawers that we never use. And, you know, there's always that glance. You look at them and we look at each other and we say, would we use this? You know, we used to use this all the time. But it's another thing to clean. It's another thing taking up space. It's another thing distracting us. So we've been pretty ruthless in our getting rid of things. And, you know, in all honesty, we always had sort of been that way. We moved around a lot during our 30-year marriage. Um, we built some houses and renovated some houses together and then would move on. And Don's 75 now, so he kind of is retired from wanting to do that anymore, which I completely understand. It was a lot of work. And um, we just want to sort of tread lightly. Not have so much stuff, carry so much weight, emotional baggage included. Sort of break the ties that bind us to stuff. Thinking back to what Ian said about how we can get distracted by getting caught in the details at the expense of the clarity of the original feeling. You know, what was that original feeling you had when you wanted to create the piece that you're creating? Maybe it needs to be really dynamic and complicated because that's, that's what you're going through. That's what you're experiencing. On the other hand, I'm finding the more chaos that is around me these recent days, the more I just want to settle into really calm, sort of zen-like spaces, create little altars for myself, and just focus my awareness on things like breathing and mindfulness, being mindful of where am I in space and time right now? What, what's here? What's real? Not my thoughts. Not the thoughts spinning through my head, but the beautiful forest that I live in, all the trees that are surrounding me. So now I have this all glued down. I'm happy with the composition. I just have to decide if I want to add some gold. And I kind of want to sit with it for a minute before I do. because I'm liking it as it is, but I'm also really feeling some gold somewhere. So I think I am going to add the gold fine liner, the gold uh, metallic paint. I'm thinking of Kintsugi, um, kin meaning golden, and sugi meaning rejoining or coming together. It's the it's the ancient Japanese art of um, taking a piece of broken pottery and putting it back together with gold powder mixed with lacquer, so that the cracks become very obvious with the most beautiful part of the pottery, which is this shimmering gold. And um, you know, it sort of symbolizes that. The brokenness doesn't need to be hidden. The brokenness is actually the most beautiful part of the of the journey. So I've been a little obsessed with Kintsugi lately, and I'm thinking my mountain or wave or whatever it symbolizes for the viewer is going to have some Kintsugi golden... Golden rejoining marks. To help represent this journey that I'm on, that we're all on really. And we were on the precipice of being able to go back out in the world. Those, those of us who are being vaccinated and 
um, honoring those who are choosing not to be for whatever reason. But the world is about to come back together. We're about to come back together. It's a really exciting and scary thing at the same time, especially for an introvert like me. I have mixed feelings about it. I've liked this quiet time. I've liked this quiet time of no outside responsibilities and because I have chronic health issues, I tend to have a lot of doctor appointments and I've liked just being still and being quiet, my husband and I being home with no expectations. So there it is. It didn't take very long at all, did it? And it's done. And it's simple. It's an, I guess it's my initial artistic response to the core feeling that I had when I started. And I feel like it does represent that well. Originally, when I grabbed those two pieces of paper, I had some other amphora in my hands and I, I put it back. I thought, no, we'll just stay to the two. And then as I sat down, um, gold, something golden came to mind. And I wasn't sure, um, you know, my golden pens didn't feel right. Um, and they don't always work so great on a surface like this. So then I saw the fine liner with the gold acrylic in it, and I thought, ooh, that's it. But I had no idea what what was going to, how it was going to transform the piece. And it has transformed it into something much more meaningful for me. My golden rejoining on a blue mountain surrounded by fire with a purple moon. And maybe this is the moon's reflection in the water. We don't know, really. Just leave it, leave it there to be as it is, what it wants to be. Okay. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this short collage session. I only have one more page in the collage journal to finish. And then it'll be done, and I'll, I'll do a full th flip through after, after it's done. Have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye.